the focus is on the force analysis. Okay. So as I mentioned about this uh, whole oh, structure yeah. of MOM. MOM is just talking about the mechanics <laughs> and the material. Mechanics, as what we know, are the force analysis. Okay, forces, different types of forces. But in this case, for MOM, most of the forces will result in static equilibrium of the object itself. So this is just one part of this force analysis. Okay. So for MOM, the force analysis will be focused on the static equilibrium, which means the sigma m equals to zero and the sigma f equals to zero. Okay. For dynamics, it's different. It means the object is moving, then your m uh, your uh, resultant force will give you m times a, and the resultant um, momentum will give you i times alpha. Okay. So this one, for MOM, you don't need to know. You just need to know this. This is the force analysis. And the second thing are the stress and strain. Okay. Stress and strain are a part of knowledge of the materials. Okay, so for materials itself, we won't involve too much in the chemical structure of the, uh, the thing itself. We just focus on stress and strain. So at the end of this whole course, what we want to achieve is we analyze all kinds of forces. There will be four types of forces taught in this course. Okay. After all, we need to analyze all these kind of forces and then decide what is the stress and the strain caused by this force in a particular point inside this object. Yeah. So that's the whole <coughs> objective of this course. So for uh, for the organization of the materials of this course, what we can have is firstly, we will have some pre preliminary knowledge about this stress and strain and also the force analysis. Okay. So after this preliminary language, our preliminary knowledge will be moving into this four types of forces. Normal, Shearing, uh, shearing, a uh, normal torsion, after normal is torsion, okay, bending, and then shearing. Shearing is move one up, one down. It's called shearing, okay. So after introduce this four type of forces, the next thing we need to know is, um, to learn is something we call the stress and strain transformation. This is a very abstract concept. This is something to do with a mathematical model. So after this, we, the last thing we need to learn is just some practices, the forces, the 3D forces, forces in the 3D space, and how they result in various types of stress and strain in the field. And you need to calculate the resultant stress and strain at a particular point of the project. So that's the entire structure of MOM. Okay. For this lesson, since last time we have finished with the force analysis, which is part of our prelim preliminary language, uh, knowledge. So for this lesson, what we want to do is to revise a bit on the stress and strain, which you learned in our materials lessons before. So what do we need to learn for stress and strain? Stress and strain basically can be categorized into two types. Two types. This is an object. So if the if the stress or if the force is in this direction, okay, the object will deform in this shape, right? So this object will be in uh, be be stretched okay so this new object or either stretched or compressed but both of the cases are talking about the deformation in the axial direction this is the axis of the object okay? both of the deformation are in the x axial direction another case is still one object I apply Forces or stresses in this direction, okay, which will be result, or which will result in this type of deformation. 
So in this case, we call it a shear stress and strain. Shear, this is a normal stress and strain. Okay. So that's the difference. So um, actually, there's a one way, one easy, a uh, one easier way of um, think of this a uh, normal stress and strain and uh, shear stress and strain, which is you think of the normal as separation of the uh, two planes, separation of planes. And a shear stress and strain, you think of the friction of the pens. Friction between pens. One is there, this one is there. In this case, we can think of this if I I push this plane in this direction, if the object is consists of uh, infinite infinitely many planes. So between each plane there will be friction, right? For this one, if it is also consists of uh, infinity planes, so between each plan it, it is this tendency of separation. Okay. So there are just two types of uh, stress and strains, but we learn that uh, we learn just now there will be four types of forces in this whole MOM syllabus. Okay. So in fact, for these four types of forces. They will be only result in two types of stress and strains. So there will there's a relationship between this four and this two. Okay. So we can now see a clear picture of try to see a clear picture of what are the relationship between a force and a stress and strain. Okay. For normal force, definitely you will result in normal stress and strain. Right. Normal forces, tension, compression, you will result in the normal stress and strain inside this beam. Okay. So for shearing, if I apply shearing force, shearing force like this, okay, you will result definitely in a shearing stress and strain. Correct. So what about the rest two? Why is the torsion? So torsion. This results in shearing or normal stress. Is cause the friction of planes, right? Correct. You think about cross-sectional plane. Okay. Cross-sectional plane, they actually they are they are having a tendency to to to, to, to slide on each other. Yeah. What about bending? Yeah, it's normal stress. As we can see, if I bend this beam, okay, I I try to bend this beam, bend this part. There will be a tendency for these two planes to leave each other. So that's why bending is related to, to the normal stress and strain. So after we know the relationship between these four types of forces and the two types of stresses, now we need to know that some of, some of the very basic formulas for this stress and strain. Okay, some of the relationship between the stress and strain. Firstly, for this symbol, you may Strain is calculated by this mean 